Des. Thank God you and I've been knocking for five minutes. Yeah, well, I was out the back. Oh. Look, I need some help with the breakdown. You're just the man. What about that big American breakdown truck you've got you keep on about? Broken down. It has. I can't get the parts to fix it. I told you, buy British. Look, it'll only take half an hour, maybe 20 minutes. Young Kevin didn't come in today, I'm on my own. Well, will I get dirty? All you've got to do is drive the van. Yeah, all right. Good luck. What's that? You don't do MOTs, do you? No, but it reassures really the customers. <laughs> what happens if they want one? Tell them I'm booked up for a month. It'll come to a bad end, Desmond. I know. <laughs> Half a fraction short, do you think? No, ah. no, no, you don't need a lot of cuff, do you? No, wearing those flash sovereign cufflinks was never your line. <laughs> the mini cab's here, Mr. Daly. Yeah, thanks, son. Oh, how about next Wednesday? That suits you? Wednesday, ah. Oh, Wednesday. Could you put it down? Mr. Daly, Wednesday, same time. As a matter of fact, Arthur, I was going to suggest next Wednesday evening as our uh, night out. Oh, fine. I'll, yes, uh... I, I took the liberty of making a few arrangements. Oh, perhaps you don't. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, I'll give you a ring and then we can confirm all the arrangements. Splendid. It's nice to see you looking so well, Arthur. <laughs> nice talking to you, Harold. <laughs> Mr. Daly. Arthur Daly. Show. Well, that, that's what I call a nice surprise. Look, I've got a cab waiting somewhere. Why don't I drop you off wherever you're going and we can have a little chat? Why don't I drop you off? What? You got into the taxi business? Not exactly. Oh, no. Where to, sir? <laughs> After his death, it was either this or bar work. But I was always afraid of getting the change wrong. So... Look, Joe, I, uh, I don't want you to think I'm... Uh, well, you know, but uh, you're the last person I would have expected to... Uh... I should have learned to type. But there you are. Hey, local. But I never felt the need to be out working when Norman was alive. I know a lot of people do. But I was quite happy the way things were. At least I think I was. Okay. It always seemed that way. But he left you all right. Oh, yes. Nice home. Not so much in the way of savings. But we believed in spending everything we earned. Quite right. After all, you can't take... <clears throat> you can't do otherwise, can you? Plus, of course, Norman never made a great deal of money. Too honest for his own good, some would say. Not me, though. He, uh, he was insured. Oh, yes. Yes, I got the insurance money all right. Then, like a fool, I let some little rat walk off with it. Eh? I don't know how you've got the front to pick up cars with something like this. <laughs> it's all part of the job. Oh, he hasn't left me the key. Should we give it a tow? No need. They're always forgetting the keys. So I brought my own. Is that legal? No, would I do anything illegal? No, I suppose not. Not if there was a witness. Yeah. I wouldn't have a red one, though. <laughs> oh, blimey. The way they do things nowadays. Yeah. Shelf cables come unsoldered. Is it? Yeah. Well, I'll just get some tools and you can be on your way. I'll get this one started up in two minutes. What, just oh, dump this back at the garage? Yeah. Oh, key under the driver's mat. I'm just going to nick this. You never know. Oh, uh, thanks a lot, Terry. I won't forget this. I won't let you, mate. <laughs> Oh, 
Honestly, Arthur. I've tried everything. Police, solicitors, I even thought of hiring a private detective. But I've heard so many stories about them. But you haven't yet tried me. Oh. It's nice of you, Arthur, but... No, I mean it. I think I can offer you just the help you need. The Faristo Polly? Para que no? I don't know anything about property deals, Arthur. No, but your average intelligence, oh. you know how to bring pressure to bear and your heart's in the right place. Look, I know she's a friend of yours, but she's grown up, isn't she? At least I presume she is. Nobody forced her to hand over the money. Terry, she was conned in the most heartless way. Young woman, recently widowed. Please, not the violins. No, but you can see it, can't you? The Villa Majorca was security. A home, a new life, it all seemed kosher. And she wasn't the only one to get taken. See, what they do is they open with a big glossy brochure, follow it up with a free trip to where the villas are going to be built, bottles of champagne all round, no expense spared. How bad's that? Not bad at all, as long as the villa you paid for gets built. It's a job for the law. No, they can't do anything. In a case like this, you've got to prove it was planned as a fraud from the start. I don't think I have your undivided attention. Look, I'll be honest with you. I mean, she drives a cab for a living. She can't afford to pay me, can she? When you get her 6,000 quid back, we're in for 12 and a half percent. The bounty under. What's 12 and a half percent of nothing? There you are, Arthur. Joe. Sit down. Thank you. This is the uh, young man I was telling you about. Terry, Joe, Joe, Terry. Hi. Hello. Yeah, funny enough, Terry was just saying he looks on your story as a sort of challenge. And how he'd be delighted to help. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. If you're agreeable. Well, I don't quite know what to say. Of course, I'll make it worth your while. I put that rather clumsily, didn't I? No, not at all. What I meant to say was, if you recover the money, then you can take what you think is right. Well, that's worth thinking about, isn't it? Um, this is the one letter I got from you. Yeah, just a volume part. Sunworthy, Homes in the Sun & Co Limited. I like the name. It seems sort of reliable. The man I dealt with was Ralph Hurst. Yeah. All right, then I'll shoot round and have a word with him this afternoon. Why waste time? What's wrong with now? Because he'll be having lunch, like everybody else. Now, there's a clever bit of deduction. Mr. Daly, we have some very special baby lambs for you today. Or if the lady prefers fish, we have some very special fresh barbuda. How about some very special red sea No, thank you. Driving? Yes. Taking a customer to White City. We'll drop you off. Oh, how kind. Right then, George. Now, what are you going to have, Joe? This is 188, isn't it? Sunworthy Ohms. Oh, I'm not the first, then. Listen. We have no connection with Sunworthy Ohms. We have no knowledge of the whereabouts of Sunworthy or any Sunworthy personnel. We had never heard of Sunworthy till we moved here last month, and only then from other people. We cannot help you in any way, Mr. Boots. Says it all, doesn't it? Are you Mr. Boots? Are you a customer? Because if not, you can push off. Hey. I'm not afraid to scream, you know. Where's Hurst? Morning. They're all gone, I'm afraid. Sorry? You looking for an allotment? We're all growing our own now. No, no, I'm, I'm looking for someone called Hurst. Well, I'm someone called Hurst. What is it? Ralph Hurst. No, he's my father. Well, would it be at home? Why? I want a word with him. What about? Well, I'd rather tell him that. It's about the villas in Mallorca. I'm working on behalf of a friend. Where are you from, a newspaper? No, no, I'm just... I see, you've just come to lean on him. To hound him, to cause him distress. Cause him distress? 
What do you think he did to all those poor punters who lost their money on villas that never got built? <laughs> Don't waste your time, son. Get out of here. Get off my land. Look, which of those houses is yours? I warned you. I'm sick to death of people abusing my father. Oh, yeah? For something he didn't do. What about conning people out of all their savings? He didn't con anyone. That will do. That will do. Now, just look at your clothes, that pair of you. Yes, you've done the beans and the spring cabbage with power of harm, too. He's another one of them, Dad. I'm not another one of anything. I'm a friend of someone who lost her money on your villa's racket. I see. you better come inside. Oh, but Dad... He deserves an explanation. We're in full view of everyone round here. I don't know what your mother's going to say. Sugar, Mr. Terry? Uh, no, thanks. Um, let's go, Mr. Terry. No, thank you. I think he wants to say his piece. Uh, well, uh, let me. Uh, you see, Mr. Terry, the <coughs> Sunworthy fiasco was as much a blow to me as it must have been to your friend. Six thousand quids with... Are you going to listen or not? It's all right, Graham. Ralph was facing redundancy when it started. I sold pharmaceuticals, but horns were being drawn in and they were obliged to let me go. The handshake was far from golden. So when Freddie Fenton offered me the job... Freddie Fenton? Yes, it was his project. Naturally, I seized the opportunity with both hands. You see, at the end of it, by way of commission, there would have been a small villa for us. An ideal place to retire to. So you're not Sunworthy, then? No, he employed me as one of the salesmen. But that's not the point. Because he did the selling, he has to take the blame. You've no idea what it's been like. People coming here accusing him, threatening violence. It's not only frightening, it's humiliating. <sighs> Why didn't you send all these people round to Fenton? Well, if it had become a police matter, I wouldn't have hesitated. The man's done nothing wrong. I gave my word I wouldn't uh, disclose his whereabouts. He's probably left London now anyway. There's no purpose to be served by pursuing him. There's no money. He's bankrupt, I expect. I'm sorry for the creditors, of course. But why punish a man because he's made a mistake? Where was he the last time you saw him? Oh, don't ask any more questions. He doesn't know and wouldn't tell you anyway. God knows why. Fenton owes him three months' commission. And then there was that business Look, about... he didn't mean it. He didn't know what he was saying. And I don't blame him for getting excited. Excited? What, threatening to beat you up if you persisted in asking for money that was yours? He did not mean it. I hope you understand now, Mr. Terry, that I was not responsible for your friend's loss. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Thank you for the tea. I'm, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> no, don't be silly, you are. I'll see you out. I, I don't want to upset Ralph any further, but I don't think he should take all the responsibility for Fenton's mistakes. It might help. It's his office address. Freddy, can I have a word? What about? Sunworthy. No, thanks. I have nothing to say. You better have something to say. No comment. <laughs> no comment. Nothing to say. Thank you. Fenton. Thank you very much. That's all I have to say. Don't. Fenton! Fenton! I'm not moving from here till you come out. <laughs> Fenton! Fenton! He's gone home, mate. He's always away by half past four. 
No, he's still in there. He won't come out, that's all. What's your game, then? He owes me some money. You want to take the appropriate steps, go through the proper channels. A Barney in the street won't do no good. No, you're right, dear. I'll, I'll go through the proper channels. Mr. Fenton, I'm in the house opposite, keeping an eye on your front door, so you better stay put. Now, what I want you to do... Hey, Dad, look, you're trespassing. No, I'm not. I'm exercising my citizen's right of arrest. What do you mean? Sunworthy. Can only mean one thing, can't it? Look, I don't know what you want. I want £6,000 that belongs to a friend of mine, Mrs. Josephine Williams, who put it down as a deposit on one of your villas that never got built. Are you trying to threaten me? I'm not sure yet. We'll see how it goes. I've just been talking to Hurst. Oh, no doubt. He told you I was the villain and he was the harmless dupe. No. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. He was no help at all. He was supposed to be partners. He was supposed to be the business expert. All he knew about was selling, now not to upset the natives. It's not very easy to admit you failed. Oh, I hope you're not going to make me cry. I get upset very no, easily. I don't want to upset anybody. You should have thought of that before you conned Mrs. Williams and the rest I, of them I out of their money. I didn't con anybody. If you didn't con Mrs. Williams, how come she lost six grand? I've done my best to pay everybody back. If anybody was conned, I was. Oh. All right, I was a bad businessman. I was undercapitalized. I got taken by the bloke who owned the land in Mallorca. In the end, I found I was paying way over the top for it. It's been a bloody nightmare. I wish I'd never got myself into it. But what are you going to do about it? There's nothing I can do about it. I'm bust. Broke. So she's just got to write off £6,000. I wish I'd only lost 6000 Everything's gone. The lot. I didn't take my card away. I had a beautiful jag. I wish I'd never heard of Mallorca. Look, I'm doing my best to get straight. And if I do, I promise oh, you. Don't make promises you can't keep. Oi, what are you living on? Social security. You mean the poor old taxpayer has to keep the likes of you? I've paid my share over the years. In myself, I see nothing against using a bit of pressure. Fair. Would have done no good at all. Well, if you say so. Did they say anything about my membership, Harold? Oh, I'll leave it a bit, Arthur. Come as my guest a few times. Show your face, I'll introduce you around, and then we'll put out a few feelers. Well, it's not a night what I'm after. I just want to join the club, that's all. <laughs> so you're told Joel, right? Me? That's your department. I just tell her the good news. <laughs> so what do you mean about the narrow lapels? Yeah, more, uh, more discreet. <laughs> She's working till nine tonight, and I'm going to Montclair with Harold. Well, we... <laughs> what do you think about the uh, whistle, Terry? What does he know? Yeah, what do I know? I'm still into wide lapels. Listen, you said you wanted to help her. I do. We eat in there, Harold. Yes, I put a table at half past eight. Oh, a bit early, isn't it? That's why I put you on the case. Put me on the case? Listen, you can say that when you're giving me $200 a day plus expenses. Best to be early before it gets busy. OK. Well, it's your problem, Terry. It's your 12.5% of six grand. Mine? It was ours yesterday. Oh, that's why you still had a chance of getting it. Yeah. Yeah, well, thanks. Thanks a lot. A minute, Mr. Fenton, sir. That's all right. I want it done properly. I like this one much better, the old blue one you had, sir. The old blue one was a 76. I know, sir. But this 
nothing like a brand new car. Even they are this. So, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. No, not this afternoon, Des, no, no. No, come on, 15 minutes, that's all. Well, what's happened to young Kevin now? Oh, I wish I knew. He, he didn't come in again today. God, it's just around the corner in High Street, Ken. It's a Mercedes. Look. You can bring your suit with you. Desmond, it's pouring with rain. Well, it's in a plastic bag. I'm not. Come on. Silly idiots left the radio on. Here, give me a toolbox. There you go. <sighs> you can dump the van back at the garage. Thanks. Good evening, Mr. Stern. Hello, Julia. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Terrific. Mr. Fine. Daly is my guest. Good evening. You've been keeping well? Very well. Oh, and you? Splendid. All set for a heavy night. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll send the book out. Thank you very much. <laughs> Come with me. Good evening, Mr. Well, I think Fenton didn't know what he was doing and you all paid for it. The Hurst is really down on his luck. And Fenton, he's got a crummy little office. He drives an old banger. Now, if anybody got any money out of it, it wasn't those two. Does Arthur know about it? Yeah, yeah, I told him. He's very disappointed, of course. Yeah. But he didn't stop him going to the Montclair this evening. Well, I told you about that, did he? Yeah. <laughs> Seemed important to him. Would you like a drink? Uh, yes, please, yeah. No more batteries. Friends of yours? Oh, he used to be a caster of mine some years ago. Often seen here. I haven't got much choice at the moment. I mean, I've got to earn my living. And there's the housekeeping and the shopping and uh, the cooking. Oh, you made too much of that. I mean, I mean, it's just a way of filling in time, isn't it, really? Well... Uh, look, I understand. It's good for us all to have some sort of routine to work by, but you've got to change it a little and extend your frontiers. What frontiers did you have in mind? Five pounds. Thanks, sir. Your mate's not doing too well. Oh, he can afford it. Huh? What's he in? Property. He's had some very nice developments in Spain, apparently. Mm, some nice ones there, too, if you don't keep losing. <laughs> I like Beethoven. Did you see the film? Was it from a film? <laughs> Don't answer that. <laughs> Hello? Uh, hold on. Turn it down, love. Andy? Oh, can't you find someone else? Oh, no, of course not. Would I let you down? I'm on my way. You're not going to work. Can't let them down. I oh, don't see why not. You don't even like the job. That isn't the point, is it? I can't take any more disappointments. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Daly. Good night. He remembered my name. <laughs> I reckon uh, Fiverr was about right, don't you? I, I don't want to look ostentatious. Oh, yes, I think that was all right. Oh. It's 
your young lady driving you home tonight? Hmm? No, 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 she's off tonight. No, I'll, uh, I'll pick up a cab. Oh, I'll drop you home if you like. Oh. Broke the Spanish developments. Is his name Freddy Fender? Not quite. Freddy Fenton. Do you know where he lives? Where he lives? I can tell you his inside leg measurement if you like. Arthur? I got some news for you. And turn that music off. I suppose you think you're Jack the Lamb walking in here. You weren't quite straight with me, were you? You said you'd lost everything. Had to sell your Jag. <laughs> it's lucky you had the roller, innit? That's not mine. It's got your initials on it. it doesn't mean to say I own it. It's leased by a company I do some work for. They allow me to use it. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? And what about all this? Mm, owned by another company. See, I don't own anything. Except, of course, that 1970 Cortina. Lucky to have all these companies that you can do some work for. Yeah, run by friends of mine. Where would we be without our friends? That's what I always say. And I don't like cheap con artists. That's what I always say. There's nothing cheap about me, sir. This watch costs more money than you'll earn this year. But you don't own it, do you? It belongs to one of your companies. No, as a matter of fact, I did buy this. Out of winnings from a casino. A friend of mine lent me the original snake, of course. And I'm not a con artist. Like I told you before, I was unlucky. I paid too much for the land. That's right. Well, that was a deal you had with the landowner, wasn't it? Whatever you could get these poor punters to pay, that was the price of the land. And then when the company went bust, he'd quietly, very quietly, give you back half the money. That's just a fantasy. Is it? Well, now, here's a bit of reality. If Mrs. Williams doesn't get her six grand back today, I'm going to make you famous. I'm going to get you in all the Sunday papers. Oh. Freddie Fenton, <laughs> monster of the Mediterranean. <laughs> Do you like it, eh? I'm going to get you on TV, uh, on the radio, everything. I've been on the radio. I've been on the BBC. I've been on London Broadcasting. I even had a television crew here once. But I had to ask him to leave eventually. I've been in the Sunday newspapers, too. Not just the cheap ones. I've had more publicity than you've had hot dinners. So if that's the best you can do, Sally. Well, what about the neighbours? This is respectable stockbroker country, innit? Now, what are they going to say when they find out what sort of racket you're in? Yeah, well, I think you should meet some of them. I've got a friend next door. Just out of doubt of maximum security after five years. I'm sure he'd be delighted to meet you. Look, Fenton. I don't like my friends being conned, and I'm likely to turn very nasty. Oh, I wouldn't advise that. John! It's my chauffeur. And my gardener. They're likely to turn very nasty, too. And you're trespassing again. So we can use reasonable force to throw you out on your thick little head. But before you go, I'm going to do you a bit of a favour. I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. In this life, there are winners and losers. Now, I'm a winner. And people like you and your friend are losers. And there's not a great deal you can do about it. It's a fact of life. 
Okay? So you just shove off. And don't try to be a hero because you won't make it. Losers never do. Goodbye. You haven't seen the last of me. I think I have. You better drive me around for the next few weeks, John. Yes, sir. Can I put the lamp on? I'm missing out on me tan. Of course you can, love. That's all finished with. Teddy! 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 Hey, Teddy! No, no, not today, mate. I'm not in the mood. No, no, I'm not after a favour today. I've come to pay you for the help you gave me. Pay me? Fair spare. What's that? It's your share. My share of what? There's 500 quid there, Terry. Des, do you mean those motors? We were nicking them. Half a grand, Terry. All for you. Desmond, what are you trying to do to me? What are you trying to do? Des, come it! It was as safe as houses. Honest, it was. You're going to get those houses. motors back. Terry, I can't do that. You're going to. Terry, they're all crated up and halfway to Saudi Arabia by now. There's a big waiting list for that class of motor over there. Desmond! Uh, no, look, take the money and forget it. It was all a mistake. I, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I should have thought... Shut, shut up! Yeah, shut up, shut up. Could you nick a roller? Sure, sure, anything. Any, any kind you want. It's a silver shadow, about a month old. Oh, come on now. Yes, sir. Yeah, sure, sure. It'll take a bit of finding, but... For Don't you, worry Terry, about that. I know exactly where to find it. Come on in. Yeah, right, let's get to work. Leave that, you can afford a new one now, can't you? Come on! I don't think I can be associated with a criminal enterprise. Criminal enterprise? Look, he's bought it all with money, he's nicked. Yeah, but supposing he reports it as stolen to the police. It would be too late. And even if he does, Des will take the blame. Won't you, Des? Yeah. Nah, there's the insurance. You pinch it, he'll wait for the insurance to pay up and just buy a new one. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. You're right. No, he's not. He's wrong. They're like gold dust, new Rolls Royces. You can't get them. Do you know, people will pay 15000 over the odds to get one. Listen, I knew a fellow Isn't once. that right? Well, you don't have to take my word for it. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like to know how long it takes to get a new roller. Uh, uh, Royce. Rolls. Uh, Royce. I won't give you the shock, sir. I'll get one of our salesmen. He uh, won't keep you a moment. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr... Daly. Mr. Daly, what can I do for you? If I were to come in here, plonk down the cash now, full purchase price, mind, how long would it take me to get a new silver shadow? Rather longer than the gestation period of an elephant, sir. Yes, well, we're, uh, we're not all zoological experts. How long is that? About three years, I'm afraid, sir. Three years? Oh, I didn't think it was that long. Well, there must be a way around that, Mr... Um... Simpson. I'm sure you follow my drift, Mr. Simpson. I mean, chap comes in, not short of cash. Know what I mean? Yes, I do know what you mean, sir. And I'm afraid it wouldn't do any good at all. You see, none of our customers is short of cash. Oh, well, that's all right, then. Thanks. Not putting your name down, Mr. Daly? No. No, I think I'll stick with the maxi.
This may not be the best place, you know. Well, if it isn't, we find somewhere else. You didn't make all this fuss with the Jag and the Mercedes. Well, that was different. I've got it all worked out. That's what we're doing here, isn't it? Working it all out. Still sod. Oh, that's all right. You can leave this one today, son. Why? Who are you? Freddy, uh, Mr. Fenton, wants us to fit a radio telephone in here. It'll be back by four. First I heard of it. I was supposed to wash it and go home early today. With all due respect, Sunbeam, Mr. Fenton doesn't really have to ask your permission for us to get a radio telephone fitted, does he? Funny. He didn't mention it. Well, no, he didn't mention it because we've only just phoned his office to tell him we could do it today. If you don't like it, go and phone it. Don't get stroppy with me. I only work here. You're all right. Don't worry. I'll tell him what a wonderful job you're doing. So, Mr. Fenton's account, isn't it? Oh, that's right. Thank you. So... Right, now where are you going to keep this? Well, no, on second thoughts, don't tell me. I don't want to know. It'll be quite safe, don't worry. I'll tell you what, Terry. They fetch a lot of money in the Middle East these years. Desmond! Just making a point. Well, don't make the point. Don't even think about it. I can't help it. Well, stop it. Have you sorted out the lorry? Is that absolutely necessary? Yes, absolutely. Marty Cortina. That's in your usual place in the car park. It's your roller that's been nicked. Hey, John. Don't do that. You'll only get your suit ripped. Well, I should just tell the police. That's a novel idea, yeah. But if you do, my friend who's looking after the car, he'll see that something very dramatic happens to it. Like it might fall over a cliff or burst into flames, that sort of thing. So you wouldn't be any better off, would you? Now, on the other hand, if you was to return Mrs. Williams her £6,000, I think I could guarantee that you get your roller back good as new. But then, of course, it is brand new, isn't it? Difference, Freddie. It's insured. Let him have it. You can get a new one. Shut up, John. Yeah, shut up, John. You see, it takes three years to get a new roller, and Freddie knows that, don't you? So where are we? Mrs. Williams gets her six grand back, and you get your roller back. Otherwise, you don't. And there's nothing you or anybody else can do about it. You know, I do hate having to say this, but you won't get away with it. Oh, yes, I will. And I'm going to do you a favour. I'll give you a bit of advice. You see, there are winners and losers in this world. Now, you, you're the one with the property, you're the one with the cash, you're the one with the roller, whether you say you own it or not. So you're the one who stands to lose. And me, I've got nothing. I'm fireproof. Here. Read that carefully. Take your time. It's your instructions.
Morning. Don't worry, it's perfect. The keys. <laughs> and this little chap connects the electric ignition. You got the money? A thousand in each packet. We're sealed at the bank, there's no need to count it. It's a pleasure to do business with you. Now you're getting home. Well, I thought you might give me a lift and a tune. Right! Are you all right? Certainly. Off you go. Twelve and a half percent of six thousand quid. Seven hundred and fifty. Twenty-five over two. Oh, three seven fifty. Yeah, seven fifty. Three hundred and seventy-five quid each. That's fair, isn't it? No, I'm not bothered. I did it for Joe. She can do what she likes with the money. You mean you don't want to be the one who has to bring up the subject of rewards? That's all right. I don't mind. Joe's the kind of girl who appreciates someone who says what's on their mind. Unless you have some uh, other arrangement with her? More uh, personal? No. No? No arrangements. No? No. Mm. Oh, Joe. Andy radioed the message to me. I was out at Luton. That's why I've been so long. There you go. Three. You don't know what this means to me. Terry, I never thought... Oh, don't be silly. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Suddenly everything's different. Oh, um, Arthur, Terry, this is my boss, Andy. Andy? Not anymore. <laughs> now, what are you fellas drinking? No, 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 we're fine, thanks. Oh, you've just lost a driver. That's right. You don't have to count it. It's all there. I know, but, uh... Two hundred pounds. I know you didn't do it for the money. That's just for expenses, that's all. Well, I know you won't be offended. It's just a token of my appreciation. No, no, I'm not offended. It's, uh, it's a really nice thought, isn't it, Arthur? Well, I uh, must be going, if you don't mind. No, we have to call on my solicitor. Yes, Andy's thinking of selling his share of the business to his partner, so uh, we're thinking of buying a little place in Mallorca. Mallorca? Mm. A bar with hotel accommodation. This is my partner now, for want of a better word. Oh, Terry, you've been marvellous. Mm. Thanks very well, much. Well, good luck to both of you. Let's know how you get on. And make sure you come and see us. Uh, Bye-bye, Joe. treat, of course. Thanks. Can't thank Cheers. you enough. Good luck. Bye. Thanks, Joe. Um, no, 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 said... no, don't bother, son. You've made a couple of hundred. Why don't you buy us a drink out of the winnings? Excuse me, love. Uh, two vodkas and slimline tonic. One large one. Two large ones. It's only money, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs>